here we are at Indian Springs State Park uh, for our very last chapel of the school year. It's been so much fun coming up with a new place to video every day, and this place is happening today, so who knows who's gonna show up in the back of the video. But if you remember last time, we talked about the return of Israel to their land, and God used four major people, and we talked about every single one of them. But the Old Testament closes out kind of sad. Um, the Jews are not really using the temple the way they should, and they're really just kind of doing their own thing. And the last book in the Old Testament is the prophet Malachi. Now, Malachi came alongside Nehemiah and shared his frustration and just said, you people are people of stone hearts. But I appreciate the truth that Malachi gives. In Malachi 3.6, for I, the Lord, do not change. Therefore you, O sons of Jacob, you are not consumed. See, we know God has a plan. And it doesn't matter if his people are not faithful. God doesn't change and God's will will be done. And because of that, he's not going to destroy them or give up on them. He's still bringing about the Messiah through the Jews. Nehemiah and Malachi close out the Old Testament. And for 400 years, God goes silent. We don't hear from him through a prophet. He doesn't send an angel. He doesn't even drop a sticky note from heaven. Nothing. And we call this the 400 years of silence. Yes, very creative title, I know. But even though we don't hear from God, God is working. God is setting the scene for the Messiah to show up, the hero to show up in the story that he has been writing. And you know, that's a lesson that we need to remember in our own lives every day. God's always working. Even when you don't hear from him, even when it feels like your prayers are just hit, hitting the ceiling, he's doing something. He is always working. And that's true in this time in between the Old and New Testament. Not long after the Old Testament closes out, a newer, more powerful empire comes in and takes over, the Greeks. Now, the Greeks wanted everybody to know Greek. Every educated person knew the language, which really helped out when you were traveling within the Greek empire. And things were good under the Greeks until Antiochus came along. Now he came in and told the Jews that they couldn't worship the one true God anymore. They had to worship the Greek gods. They couldn't make animal sacrifices. And he actually took God's temple, sacrificed a pig to Zeus. Oh, so many of the Jews were outraged. They wanted to revolt. Unfortunately, some of the Jews, they just kind of went along with it. They gave up their belief in God and gave up anything supernatural. Well, one of the families that were outraged by what the Greeks were doing was the Maccabeus family. They led a lot of revolts against this Greek empire that had come in and taken over. Matter of fact, they called these revolts the Maccabean revolts. And Israel had fought for its freedom and won. And as they were getting ready to rededicate the temple to God, they only found one day's worth of oil to burn the lanterns. And so they asked God, God, we're trying to rededicate to you. You'll have to take care of the rest. And as the story goes, that one day's worth of oil lasted eight days. Now, this may sound a little bit familiar, but this is why the Jews celebrate Hanukkah. They remember the Maccabean revolt and how God brought his people out of slavery once again. And for about 100 years, the Jews were free. So while the Jews are enjoying their freedom, there's another powerful empire coming through and taking over everything, the Roman Empire. Now the Romans did come in and make improvements to the temple. You know, the one that Zerubbabel built. They made it bigger and a little bit more glorious. But something that the Romans were really known for were building roads. See, they wanted to be able to connect everything that Rome had taken over. These roads were so well built a lot of them are still around today. And as I'm walking around here at uh, Indian Springs, I, I feel like I'm walking on the Roman roads. How do you like that Roman road, Clark? I mean, you wouldn't want to drive your brand new car on them. And you could get 
everywhere in the Roman Empire. But things were tough for the Jews under the Roman. Rome charged a lot of taxes. They were sometimes even cruel to the Jews. They would raid their villages and take things that weren't theirs. And so some of the Jews wanted to revolt against the Roman Empire. We call them the Zealots. Also in this time, we still have the Jews that had given up on their belief of God and supernatural things. But then you have Jews that go to that other extreme. They knew God's law so well and wanted everybody to follow God's law that they actually made up laws for the laws. You know, don't work on the Sabbath day. They actually had rules about how far you could walk and what you could do. But this hardship under the Roman rule caused the Jews to look to God for hope. It made them remember that God had promised to send a savior, someone to rescue them. Did you catch it? Over this 400 years, God has been setting the scene for the Messiah. Under the Greeks, there was one language. Everybody with an education knew Greek. It was going to make it so much easier when they're spreading the gospel of Jesus. The Jews being free for a time, it gave them hope. It gave them a hope that God had not given up, God wasn't done with them. But even under the hardship of Rome, it made them look to God and remember the promise of the Messiah. The Romans built amazing roads. Again, when it was time for the gospel of Jesus to go out, it was going to make it so much easier for them to travel. The 400 years of silence is broken. When God speaks to a priest and tells him, your wife is gonna bear you a son and you're gonna name him John. We know him as John the Baptizer. And then not long after that, an angel came to a young lady in Nazareth and told her, you have found favor with God and you're going to bear the son of God and he will be known as Emmanuel, God with us. We know him as Jesus. This is what the whole story has been leading up to. Jesus, hope for the world. God has been setting the scene for Jesus to show up. The hero of the story. And for 33 years, he lived on this earth. But he wasn't what people expected. He didn't come just to free his people from the Romans. He came to free them from their sin. He didn't come just for Israel. He came for the whole world. See, Jesus wasn't just a good teacher. He wasn't just one of many options of how to get to God. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father except by me. Jesus, God himself, left heaven to rescue a fallen world, making a way for us to get back to him. So as you're getting ready for your summer vacation, don't forget what you've learned this year. We've gone through the entire Old Testament. And I wanna encourage you to spend some time reading about Jesus, his time on this earth, and the truth that he taught. I know there's four books that talk about Jesus, which one to pick. Start with the Gospel of John. It's the easiest. It's the most general message. It's a lot of good stuff. And if you get bored and finish John, go back and read Matthew. Spend some time seeing who Jesus is and what he had to say when he was on this planet. Well, Clark and I have enjoyed our nine weeks going through the Old Testament with you. So, Clark, you wanna tell everybody to have a good summer? Have a great summer, we miss you, and I can't wait to see you next year. Bye. Clark's gonna leave you with a virtual High five. Now, Indian Springs is actually named because there's a spring here. And at some point, they actually built this huge building around it and made it so it was easy for people to have access to the spring water. Now you see, there's always people here filling up jugs and always taking the water because it has all of these natural minerals. Now, when you come down here, it kind of smells like boiled eggs. That's the sulfur. So if you come to Indian Springs, you have to at least try the water once. So in celebration of the beginning of summer, Clark Kent and I have some Pringles that we're gonna down.
and make a mess with my car, apparently. He doesn't speak to a prophet with a message. Anti anti Antioch. So things under Roman... So things under Roman leadership... Reading up, and Clark is pulling me. With the Greeks, Clark.